please welcome to the stage, President of the University of Kentucky, Eli Capilouto. Good morning and thank you, Matt and Nick. I'm delighted to join you this morning and to reflect on the many ways as a community we can build a better future for our Commonwealth. Indeed, the foundation of this meeting is ideas, the power that lies in the intersection of disciplines and the convergence of creative thinking. It is something we talk about every day at the University of Kentucky, as we too are a promise built upon people and ideas. We know that when we get together, we can make for what is a better future for our state, country, and world. And we are asking ourselves at the University of Kentucky, just like many of you, what are those challenges that we face and what does it mean for tomorrow? So there are three important questions we try to ask ourselves every day. Number one, how does our university in everything we say and do advance Kentucky? Second, how do we specifically work to tackle Kentucky's greatest challenges? And three, what do we know owe not only our economy and the health of our citizens, but what we do, do we owe in terms of the civic vibrancy and vitality of the Commonwealth and world? Those questions and those challenges are some of the same ones I think you will be asking yourself at this conference. It is what Concordia does as a nonprofit platform. It is why we are delighted to be your partner in this summit, along with our friend, Nate Morris, who encouraged our participation and helped sponsor this convening. Nate could locate his global, his global company anywhere, but he has chosen to be here, home in Lexington, because he understands the potential of this place. He is passionate about the promise of UK, of this community, of this Commonwealth. I've seen so much evidence of this commitment throughout this state and throughout this campus to ask the questions that need to be asked and more importantly, to find the answers wherever they take us. I recently toured parts of Kentucky that were impacted by those horrible storms and tornadoes. Governor Bashir, who's part of this conference, has spoken so passionately about the incredible challenge as he has led our state's response. In every place I went, from Caldwell County, where our Princeton Research Farm is located and has been really leveled, to our extension offices in Graves County, which overnight became central to the emergency response effort, I saw the evidence of the resolve and resilience that so marks our people. Everywhere I went, I saw an unshakable resolve to rebuild. But I also heard the recognition that we must rethink, rethink as well. We must rethink, not if, but how we build our communities and rebuild them for tomorrow, a brighter tomorrow. And at the University of Kentucky, it means we must approach everything we do with a laser-like focus. Our mission over the last 155 years hasn't changed. It's education, research, service, and care. But how we embolden that mission to meet the challenges of a 21st century must change. To that end, we recently developed a strategic plan that is built upon five foundational principles that I'll mention. Number one, putting students first. We must prepare more Kentuckians today for, for the industries and necessary skills of tomorrow. We want students to not only get a great first job, but we want them to be able to create more jobs. Simply put, we need more Nates. Second, we need to take care of our people. 
And over the last two years, I think we've redefined how we can best do that. Overnight, we set up a makeshift vaccine clinic at a football stadium and delivered 250,000 doses of hope. Those were the backbone to stopping this pandemic. Three, we need to inspire ingenuity in everything we do, and we need to seek the resources to enable us to do that. Last year, we garnered $470 million in external support to answer the questions that most vex Kentucky, from cancer and heart disease, diabetes and obesity, energy independence, and systemic issues surrounding the lack of access to care and opportunity. Four, as the state's university, we must ensure greater trust, transparency, and accountability in everything we do. Our state legislature developed and now funds higher education through a performance funding model that asks us to be accountable to its citizens. We need more graduates. We need a more diverse student body. We need those who are better prepared for tomorrow's workforce. And lastly, our foundational principle to bring together many people into one community. We're one of the most diverse communities in the state. We have students from all 120 counties, over 100 countries in all 50 states. Just as Matt and Nick mentioned in their opening, we have to be a place where we debate the issues of our day, but not be divisive as we do so. So this is how we think we can best advance our state on those principles. But as we move forward, I also think our aspirations should be as big as our opportunities and our challenges. So we have a couple of big dreams that I'd like to share with you. Upon those foundational principles, we believe we should not dream too little dreams. And what are those? Just two. First, Dr. Mark Evers, director of our Markey Cancer Center, has announced his plan to cut cancer rates in half in Kentucky. Unfortunately, we have some of the highest incidence rates in the country. Cutting those rates in half will allow us to meet the moment for families and communities across the state. Second, more than a quarter of our students are the first in their families to go to college. And no matter what your level of experience and that of your family, college can be an incredibly complex place to navigate. Across this country, we have made advances, and those individuals from the top income groups are those who are the second and third generation in their family to complete college. We have lagged when it comes to those first generation students. At the University of Kentucky, we pioneered a program called UK Leads. We have demonstrated that we know how to close that financial gap for unmet need, and more importantly, reduce the debt that students carry away when they graduate from college. And finally, what do we owe society? What is the moral dimension of our efforts? We hope we're witnessing the ebbing of a global pandemic, but that contagion exposed the fractures and fissures that exist in access to care and capital faced by too many in our society. We also saw in the voices of many of our brothers and sisters the distrust that exists in institutions that are the bedrocks of our country and our democracy. Too many people feel excluded or pushed aside. Universities like ours, with groups like you, must play a role here. We've got to create space for discourse and dialogue without divisiveness and discord. This conference shows us the way. We are pleased to be your partner. We know together there'll be a brighter Commonwealth, country, and world. Thank you very much.